So welcome everyone to today's session of week two on hands-on training on R. Today we are focusing on uh, how to make graphs in R. In the previous session, what we talked about how to install the R and what are what is the concept about libraries and packages, uh, how to load uh, how to load the data, what are the different types of data that we can load, how to describe the data, how to create the mean, median, and mod from the data. Now, what we are going to do is we will be using those functions again. And I will be also telling you about that we have already studied in, in the previous class so that you can relate the sessions. And today what we are going to do is we will be focusing on how to create a visual output from the data. So I will show you some of the slides. They are too many. I will just give you a brief, brief overview and then we'll go towards the coding. So grammar of graphics uh, is, is a concept that uh, when you make a graph, you will, you will be able to edit everything. Uh, what what does mean by grammar of graphics? You can edit x axis, y axis, title, legend, line thickness, line um, uh, solid line or dotted line. So if R says that when you make a graph, you can edit any feature of the graph. That's why they call it grammar of graphics. So let's let come back to the commands. So this section will help you learn about the visualization of data set using ggplot. So GG, GG means grammar of graphics and plot. So ggplot2 is the second uh, mo modified version of ggplot, means it is a, a updated version. That's why they call it ggplot2. So this is a library name and its logo, and it is a part of library that we already discussed, which was tidyverse. So if you can se separately load this library, ggplot2, or you can load the tidyverse library and ggplot2 will be automatically Loaded. For example, if I come back to R and I have reloaded it, let's if I load the tidyverse library, you will notice that it will show how many libraries are loaded with it. So it is showing dplyr, read r, forecats, string r, ggplot2, table, lubridate, tidy r, per. So their names are a little bit different from standard English word because they don't want to make it. Um, uh, standard English word, otherwise R will be confused. That's why uh, rather than forecast, they said four cats. Rather than uh, to say that uh, to say the dates, so there's lubricate. So lubricate rather than lubricate. So time series data, flow of the data. So lubricate, and then table from table to table. So tidy R to tidy the data. So the, these are some names that I'm giving you examples. Then there are some libraries like filter, lag. So they are loaded. So that's why it's saying that you can se se separately load tid ggplot2 or you can load the uh, tidyverse. I will go towards the next. So the simple graph says uh, a simple graph has brought more information to the data analyst than uh, analyst mind than any other device. So it's saying that if a, a good graph can give you more information rather than a number or explanation or tables. Next is that ggplot2 is a, is a library in a family of libraries within tidyverse. Okay, so you can load the tidyverse tidyverse separately or you can use load the ggplot but since you have to do other functions too so usually people load uh, tidyverse so let's go forward so he's saying that he, now there are some examples i will go through it quickly and then we will do it uh, in in r so he's saying that when you load tidyverse you can load one data set and its name is mpg so if you tied, type mpg it will load a data set and it will show like this. So typing MPG, it will load a data set and it will show here. So what it is doing, it is trying to make a graph. So the coding requires that ggplot, bracket, data file, link. So you might have, you should load the data file first. So then you will say data is equal to this data file name, plus then you make a scatter, uh, scatter plot. So geom point. So geom means geometry, what should be in the graph box. And point means scatter plot, mapping, uh, aesthetics. Aesthetic means how you will set x axis display variable, y axis uh, x y h w y variable. When you do this, 
or will show this graph like a scatter plot and if you want to add a line you will have to add more things like uh, it, will, it will he will show you the comment so he's explaining here what the plus means that if you add a plus you can add the next command in the next line otherwise uh, you can add the command in the same line too so he's explaining all the things here and and then if you go forward mappings it says that how to add this so he said these are the aesthetics you can add colors you can add dots i will give you more examples uh, there is a there is a file that i already shared so he says that you can add ggplot data file geom aesthetics x axis y axis and color of the dots color color equal to some some class variable which is in the data file when you do this it will make graph like this so you have colored the uh, different types of observations so class was one variable in the data file and it has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 names okay so this way you can label the graphs so but this way you can add the size in terms of the class variable the third axis here you can add the the shapes then you can add the black and white color and these are some other names for discrete you can use discrete colors or continuous this size continuous shape you cannot add continuous for shapes so these are some examples so i will i will go through it quickly so that i can show you some important concepts here you can add the colors so you can notice that the color is now outside the aesthetic now what it is doing it's only coloring the dots rather than coloring because of some property so these are two examples in the first case the color is explaining some variable in the second the color is just the color of the dots so it's outside the aesthetic so when it is outside the aesthetic we call it um, set so it's outside the the set so then there are the more two examples like like this now see the color is used differently so there are other examples now there are two types of graphs how they make it we will show you the codes uh and these are the files that i will show you right now these are a few more examples uh now still it is going towards box plot so if you want to make a block plot box plot you write like this geom geom box plot it will make you box plot like this for that your x axis should be discrete and y axis should be continuous then it will make you box plot so uh, So C X is discrete variable class and Y is continuous variable. Then you can make uh, this histogram. For that, geom histogram. Then other examples. I will go through it. These are the other types density graph. So if you want to show the distribution, density map. These are some examples. So these are the histogram with color. For that you use fill. then the other examples include this is the line for there are two graphs now geom point and geom smooth smooth is the average of each line so smoothing line and it has a positive lower and upper interval so there are two graphs in on on top of each other so these are the codes for it every time you write a plus it means you are adding a layer now another other example is that you can move the x and y axis description in the first command rather than in, in individuals so that you can make the command smaller see this example here they, they have used a filter so that line is not showing everyone it's only showing for f for the green ones f green so these are few examples now how to save it if the examples are shown i will i will do this in in the in the r we will go through it now one more thing that in the i need to show is that the folder that i showed you there is one compressed folder graphs in r when you open it there are few more examples that are not in the ppt uh, pp uh, yeah, powerpoint files but they will show you how to make graphs uh, in detail like glossary glossary of charts if i come open it up okay so let me show it here so it it is showing you when to make which type of graph so it is it is giving you this details uh, what type of graphs you may you make and what are the precondition 
so you should if you are weak in making graphs you should study this so that it will give you an idea it's like candlestick but what does it look like when you use it box plot when you use it what does it look like so all the dark types it is giving you some examples so you can access it from the folder that i show shared you in the class next is this this file is very important so let me open it up so if you uh, have already made decided what graph you are going to make you might face a challenge that how to edit the header or uh, x y axis labels how you want to change the colors or the font size what you can do you can use this file and go through it it will show you how to change so if you want to change axis if you want to change titles if you want to change legends if you want to change colors themes lines text coordinates anything that you want to change it will give you examples so here see it is loading the gg plot and it is loading one data set using tidyverse and then starting to explain so this is one empty graph and it is loaded the data now it is saying that this is a point graph now note that the command is g plus g on point point so you can use this way for that you need to load this command g is equal to the aesthetic uh, data data file name x and y axis so g is the foundation now you tell later on what to want to do you want to make a point point scatter plot if you want to make a line plot if you want to make a line plus scatter plot if you want to play play a, play a point start but you need to color it and shape and size so you can explain many things here then you can add a line so this way this file will be a bible for you in explaining how to edit anything that you want to edit for example you can add some some in the the sub superscript on the y axis you can you can change anything it will show you few more examples so you can change the color of the x and y axis you can you can change here again the color is changed you can also change the uh, font font type you can also change the angle of the x axis you can also change uh, uh, the angle here you can also remove the axis labels whatever you want to remove then we go to uh, see the other examples so this file will help you in uh, improving the graphs that you want to make just to fit what you want to do in your graph so here you can see excel uh, scales are changed it is more vertical and it is more horizontal so uh, this file you also you are also getting it in the folder then there are other complicated graphs like uh, dumbbell charts so you can make i will i will open it up like here make it wider so that i don't have to open i can show it here so this is called dumbbell plot this so if you have a panel data uh, and uh, the data for many countries for different years you can plot like this it will show how they have grown over the time okay so this way you can uh, the, the darker color will be the average and the shade will show how it has changed over the time so this way you will see a, a growth chart for panel data so if you have a panel data for companies or countries you can make plot like this then there is a card graph card lollipop chart so i will show it a example here let's see if it they have shown it if they have shown a diagram so it, the example is here just try it how how does it look like okay uh, i might show you an example later on this is a rain cloud chart it will look like this Uh, it has a scatter plot uh, or, uh, or a histogram with dots and a box plot and then this dist distribution chart so all three things together so it looks like that it is raining so it's a rain cloud chart so you can make this so it will give you distributions so this file is also there then uh, hull plot so hull plot i will show you example so it will it will categorize the data set and it will make a line through it so this is another then gg halves it's a data file and it will make half so half graph is the box plot and half graph is the distribution histogram so this way you can see the normality and 
and the and the density of each observe each category so then there's a group difference variable so if you want data set you want to compare the differences it is usually used after regression growth comparison if you have two variables you need to compare growth this is also suitable for panel data sets if you want to compare the gdp growth of different countries over time okay then then there is uh, let's go then if you want to do the moderation charts its examples are here if you do the moderator regression and you can use this moderator charts it will also estimate a plot after the moderation regression temperature anomalies for the people who done do regression on this so this is anomaly data you can color different uh, side so all positive values have this different color so you can make chart like this so these are charts so it is plotting last year's data of temperatures on uh, monthly temperatures on this year's monthly temperatures and coloring it if there is a major change so this way you can plot anomalies then treatment effects uh, this data is is for experimental design this, this is one example then how to overlay plots so this is another file that you can use how to add a graph on on each other so these are few examples that i have shared you to to so that you can learn how to become professional in making graphs so but the file number 1 which is the biggest one it is a catalog and and, and it is 94 pages uh, if you understand this one you will be able to uh, excel in making good graphs now let's go towards today's session in this session first of all we'll start with again uh, set working directory if i run it it will set the working directory to folder number 2 and and when i when i run it again let me so it will show you uh, the folder and then you can load the data then my command is if i don't lead, uh, need to load the data so x1 and uh, read excel this is the library then i will load the data file df equal to read underscore excel and the directory since i have already said that this is my working directory i don't have to write so the path does not exist so it is saying that it is not able to find the file so there are two ways to do it either you go here and select the file from here or then go here and set the working directory where your your file is so what i will do i will go back and set the week number 2 and i have set the working directory uh, and this command is there i will copy it and i will replace it with my first line because it was not correct and then i will load the library still that the path does not exist so there is still error in the code file so this is the excel data file so i will click it here import data set and i will tell it that it is df data file and then i will import the data file is loaded there is variables country year y c p i d and dummy some variables are here so this way uh, the data is loaded so let's do some exercises some examples so week number 2 i will save it because i have changed it now i will show you the the standard command that that we have so shown you i have shown you in the uh, powerpoint so df gg plot data file is df but i have not said it df so what i will do uh, the, the first way is let's change my data file is not df either i will change it here or what i will do i will select the data file name uh, open it up or i will it will show you the name of the file here what i will write df i will write it here df equal to name it will create a new data file so i will use this one now so data file is df we on point mapping x axis is c y axis is y so while i run this control enter it will show me a graph so this is the graph here i can zoom it up and i can show you here on a bigger screen i can make it as big as possible uh, this way you can view it what are the patterns then you are need to export you can as uh, you can say copy to clipboard it will open it up like this you can increase the font uh, the pixels i will say it is, it should be um, 
800 and then it will update automatically and update the preview it will be bigger then you can save it either copy it and then word it save it into the word file or what you can do is uh, you can go here and then save as image it will ask you where to save and you can save it as a jpeg or tif or usually the journals which are sensitive to good quality images they require tif file otherwise jpg and png are also fine uh, if you make it in eps the advantage of eps is that uh, using powerpoint uh, using adobe photoshop uh, you can you can uh, edit it later on but it's not it's not our expertise so we will try it using jpg so you can you can edit the font you can save the change the directory uh, up till this command you cannot change the labels of x and y but the files that i've shown you you can you can add a plus sign and and write a command to edit labels you can open this pt file and it will show you how to add labels so if i open it up and find the example here again let's bring it up on the screen bring it up and i will find control find label so i need to change working with excel axis uh, or axis titles so let's go back this is titles so it is saying that you can add this command so if you zoom it up this so i will copy this and come back to r and i will after plus i will write this so x x label is uh, consumption you can write consumption and y label is gdp you have to write between the commas because it's actual data not numeric data and you can add a title on the top that will be uh, demand demand uh, demand based on income so you can write anything that you want or a consumption curve so when i plot this it will show you the labels so uh, so y axis is gdp the labels are here but the title you can change it if you want to add more things you can study this document and you can add subtitle caption or tag anything that you want to add so if you add this so see the tag is there figure one title subtitle and even a source of data you can add all of the things that you need at appropriate places so there are many more things in the doc this document i have not shown you the whole there are many more types of graphs that are shown here not only the scatter plot so so it will be very good for you if you uh, use it as a reference file but for that the first file where you we discussed um, how when to use which graph it's very important for you we have around uh, eight minutes uh, before this file meeting will close and we'll open the next one in that i will show you a few functions next is r commander you have to install this so uh, this library is called r our commander so if you want to install it you can go in packages press this install button and then write r c m m d r r commander it will if you click this it will install but i have already installed it i will load the library when i load the library what you will see that it will load and it will open a new window let me see where it opens yes so i will bring it up on the screen so it will open a window like this i will make it full screen this is our commander window it's it works just like spss but little bit different so since i have already loaded the data set i will add active data set and my active data set is df so i have loaded the data in our commander here you can do you can go in graphs do you do you want to add you want to create a, a, a histogram just click histogram it will ask what variable you want to use I will use variable y okay and if you want to uh, press ok it will make the graph let's see where it is it is shown here on the uh, r studio if you go back in r commander if you want to add histogram with uh, groups you can add country as a group so okay it will make this and you can notice that it will give error because 
there are too many types of countries and it we cannot change colors for each country so we it, you might have to create some other category which has fewer types you can add a scatter plot for that you can select p from x axis and c from y axis and then uh, okay so it will plot you a graph and it will give you some error if there is let's see there is an error because i have already added the subcategories but it will make you a graph let's see if it is showing uh graphic palette so yes so it is saying that i have already settled that show me subcategories and it will not so you have to remove it not by groups cancel and okay so let's see if it grow again it is giving same error because it is not removed yet let me show you how to remove it so scatter plot and plot by country it is saying that plot lines by group and pick one it's cancel just press reset now p y and c and just press okay so the the error is here because it has some missing value so you you can plot some graphs which are univariate so i like box plot i will say for p and i will press okay and it will show you a box plot so this way you can see about so there are too many errors that's why there are too many out outliers so th the graph is very small so this is first method that you can use to to uh, draw graphs okay so let's let's do some more activities on it before we go for a break and then come back so in this graph you can add more graphs like uh, you can add a, a pie chart let's say if there is a pie chart uh, it, it does not pick any other variable so let's go in some other category like line line graph or let's say quantile comparison density stem and leaf let's say pie so it's a stem and leaf let's say what does it show it is it is it is showing in terms of a table let's make it bigger so this is the output for stem and leaf this there are too many that's why it is very big so you can show it using this method so this is stem and leaf okay now let's go for some other types so this way you can make more tools like you can make create models but we'll study that in the coming classes you can then compare distributions there are many type of distribution if you, if somebody who is from statistics you can check for normality distribution so check for t distribution chi square f and many other functions but in here you can go for another i will make one more like dot plot and create one variable p so let's see what does it show if it doesn't make it will give you an error because this function is very rudimentary and and it doesn't have any checklist that it will so error figures margin if you see this type of error why it is so because it is trying to make a bigger graph but your graph window is very small so for that you might have to make it bigger so and make it again so that it will work so graph dot plot e and you come back see it's here it's plotted on the number line so if you see this error where it talks about margins it means that graph is very big it and r is not able to make it in a smaller plot and and that's why it is giving an error so uh, up till here if you have any questions you can ask now and then we will join i will continue after the break okay let's continue after the break and we'll we'll continue with uh, joining the people in the session there were few queries that uh, people who downloaded this example csv file they were not able to open it in the excel or or open it in uh, the r what the problem was let me show you what they did is they click this file and it opened in this view and few of the people what they did they used this and print as pdf if they downloaded this file so this is a pdf file and it will not be able to load in excel so what you have to do is click this 
go in open as a new window it will open in your google drive and then you can press this button and download it as the format in which it is it is then it will open in your computer so this way you will able to load your data files so let's go back to today next point so we already uh, seen the r commander so you, some of you will not be able to run it properly because it's an old feature and it might require the you need to install some other extra libraries that are not automatically installed in my r most of the libraries that are prerequisites are already installed and even if there are some errors what i did i copied the error file and pasted on google and saw what is the missing and sometimes they told me that these are few libraries that are not automatically installed and you might have to install it again okay next i am going to show you our next uh, feature that is exquisy and this is important because if you are not able to understand how to make how to write the codes to make good graphs you can uh, here in you can see that now we are going to use the exquisy library uh, and and this library is useful because uh, you might no, not have to remember the codes and exquisy exquisy will help you to load and and guess what type of graph that can be made so after r commander which is a basic rudimentary version of making graphs but the problem with r commander is you are not you cannot change the labels or you cannot make uh, colorful graphs but you can improve that using the exquisy so you have to install this exquisy for that you might go have to go here in packages and press the install button and then load the exquisy this way you will be able to run so i will load the library exquisy and if it is installed it will say that it is loaded sometimes the warning message is just telling you that and that the something is changed but it doesn't mean that it has not estimated it has not loaded so if you need to confirm if the library is loaded or not you can come here and and in your packages you can write esq you can see the tick is here the tick means that the data is loaded library is loaded so if you run this is quiz r and bracket open close it will open a new window so i will run it first it will open it as a new window and it is showing you like this you can now what you can do is that you can change your data file press here and from your environment you come here and press the environment and it will show you the data file that you already have let's see how so yes in the environment the global environment you don't have to come here but in your in your data frame data file is already there so this is your environment so i selected the environment data file that i have already loaded df when you press this and then press import data so your data file will loaded all the variables will be shown here now you can see x axis y axis fill color size group faces so you can you can uh, place your variables let's see if i place y on x axis it will suggest me that i can make a histogram or a step graph there are only two types of graph that i can make so it has made me a histogram okay so once you notice that it has suggested you to make a histogram what you can do you can add label change the label titles you can add a title label caption x y label options you can also change um the number of bins in the histogram if you want to make it smaller or bigger if you make it smaller it will it will have um uh, more broader bins number of bins are fewer if you want to add increase it it will increase the number of bins you can add a limit on the x axis you can transform x axis into log or any and any and the transformation you can flip the coordinates if you want if i flip it it will make histogram like on on y axis then appearance you can change the color i can change the color of the graph then you can add legend where you want to move it 
okay then for the data you can uh, filter the data for any uh, limit that you want to use then once you finish it if you want to copy the code you can open it up copy the code go in your r and and minimize it and paste it in the r so or press it is insert the insert the code in the script so it will be pasted somewhere same way here when you close the r it will show or just copy it and paste in your word file and when you close it and paste it in your code file so this way it is a very handy method so if you add another variable let's see if i put c here it will suggest you that you can make a area graph step graph line graph you can add other types it has shown here so it has suggest me to make a scatter plot and i can label it i can change the limits i can make the change the color of the dots uh, dots and i can make it a bullet or even a square so and then filter the values if i want so this is the way that you can use all the features for graph a in here then i have a dummy variable i can use it to color so it has colored for uh, for the dummy variable types for zero it is dark and for one it is lighter color so it has shown here so this way you can uh, copy then when you finish it you can uh, it has shown you how you want to add you can add more features here okay so this way you can copy the code and then go into the r let's say i am i am finished using it i will copy the code copy to clipboard close r and i will come here and i this this library is already loaded i will i will paste the new code here and i it has overwritten this code i will copy it up and write it on the top again after script so see if i run this command it will show me the graph here this which i which i saw if i had changed the labels it would have also change now i can export it using save as image i will increase its font size to uh, 1 megapixel using 1024 to 680 and update the preview since it is very big it will now i want to save it i will call it scatter plot and save it in the folder and when i go then have a look it will show me somewhere here so this is the graph scatter plot here and you can look let me move it in this screen so look the graph this here so this is high density graph you can see i have zoomed it up still the graph is not uh, pixelating and it has a good quality so i hope you understood how to make uh, de detailed graphs and and this squizzle library is smart enough to suggest you Uh, what kind of data you can use so in the environment i will come back here and select the data again and then press import i can select y here and c here and then another variable using uh, uh, the same variable is here so let me move it out and prices should come here it has made me a scatter plot what i will do i will on the plot options i need to on x axis i will make it log so log so that the graph is smoother so y x axis become transform into a log form okay so this way i fight make it to log of 10 so this way i and then if you want to add some other thing like for using the another variable 3 c and use it as a color or or size and then when you add a size the bigger means the bigger value of c so this way you can make any type of graph and it will suggest you the graph so this is the library that is very handy if you do not have uh, basic skills to make new complicated codes and it will help you to make graphs next function that i am going to tell you is radiant that is more advanced version you need to install this library and it is a big library it will take some time to install so when you run this library run it will uh, it will load and then when you press radiant bracket open close 
If you'll open it up in your Internet Explorer, I will bring it here. here. So it is loading up. So this is this is library has opened up in your local host, and here it is still loading. When you come into data, it will ask you what variable. So in the data set, I've selected DF because it's already loaded. And then uh, if you want to uh, add uh, anything, so it has given you the data file. Okay, and now you can view the data and you can visualize. You can and select any variable, uh, scatter plot, and select x and y variable. Okay, so it will start giving you plots. So you need a line in it. So when you play, create a plot, it will give you plots like this. So this is a feature that this library has that you can plot, you can uh, explore or transform or combine. But this library has many type of data graphs that you can make, like a box plot. So let's change the box plot. It's loading the plot. It will take some time because it's a big uh, data file. And it will only show if, if it is feasible using X and Y variable. So Y variable and face it, none, color, numeric. So I think you have noticed this. So and then in this graph, there are many other features that we will study later on. But here we were focusing on creating a graph. So you can you can make a scatter plot, a density plot, distribution bar, box plot, many other types. So let's let's make a surface plot. And for that, I've used no fill variable available. So fill for that fill, I need to give some example fill. I need to give a dummy. So let's start with this. Get a plot. Abject error. So it will not make an error because the data is not suitable. But this is a library where we will continue talking about this library in the next session where we will learn how to do a data analysis and, and detailed models. Okay. So when you finish, you can uh, export the data graph using this. When you make a graph, let's say I pick it up and I make a scatter. This is the graph and if you want to save it, just press download. It will ask you where to save it and select the folder and then you can save the graph. Okay. And in, in the bottom, I think there, are, there was one more feature. Okay. So this way you can save the graph and when you finish, you can just stop this session and this will close and you will come back to R. This was the second feature. Third. Next is Lattice and this library. Uh, let's go and have a look. So if I run the Lattice library, it will load and then you uh, can use this. So what it is doing? Cloud Y equal to C into P. So independent and dependent variable. So when you run this, it will make you a three dimensional graph. So you can see that price A and Y axis. So this library can help you to make a uh, three-dimensional graph where you have two independent variables and one dependent variable. So this is a static. You cannot move it. Uh, so this way, this can be used. And if you want to add some headings on it, so what you can do is you can write cloud uh, and let it open close and search how what are the features that you can explore. Let it come. Oh, I've drawn right into the wrong spelling. C P L O U. So it has shown me a cloud. So let me say lattice cloud. Yeah, the plot. When you press this, it will show me uh, what you want to add. So you can add these things. So X label and Y label. Okay. So you can add X limit and Y limits. Or if you go down, it will give you one example where, which, where from where you can learn how to edit. So let's go 
to the bottom. And let's see if I have them example. So if you use this, you will have some heading on it. So if I add comma and I write, let's say if I write studio, so control enter. So there is a heading on the top. So this way you can add heading. Similarly, if you search more things, you can add like, uh, you can add more details like you can increase the, um, increase the size of the dots. CEX is used for increase the size of the dots and color if you want to change the colors. So this way, this can be used for a 3D plot. Next is uh, library bibliometrics. One of the example uh, for this, I give you one uh, homework where I ask you to load one Word file. And for that, I am going to show you one file, one library where if you have that Word file loaded or some some other type of data sets i will show you it later on you can do the qualitative analysis using graphs i will show you the data file first the data file i'm using is is the data file that i extracted from scopus so if you go in the scopus library and if you give them the keywords what it will do it will give you the repository so in this repository i have 17 articles and it's shown me author names in the first then author IDs, Scopus IDs in the second, title of the paper in the third, year, uh, journal name, volume issue, and the, the DOIs, author uh, affiliations, abstract, author keywords, uh, and other, other information that Scopus has. So if you have this information, this is qualitative data, and I extracted it from Scopus. So what I will do in R, I will open library bibliometrics, is used for bibliometric analysis. Press enter. When you load the library, you will open Biblio Shiny. It will open up in, in your Explorer, Internet Explorer file. I will open it, open it up here. It will take time, so some, some time to load. Yes, it is loaded. So Shiny app for bibliometric analysis. So when you come here, you go for data, load the data in the data file. You can select your import uh, bibliometric uh, raw data file. And you say that my data file is from Scopus. And then you said browse. And in the browse, you will go in week two and Scopus data. And, and when the data is uploaded, you can select start. It will convert the data into information it will tell you what what type of information is complete the the abstract is complete author data is complete some of the information is not complete like keywords and and uh, number of citation so if some data is missing it means it will not make those graphs so this is the data it has shown you the papers that have loaded then you can go and do the overview main information it will make you a graph showing how many years there were let me move it here so number of years, starting and ending, number of papers, number of document, growth rate, in the time, citations. So it is visualizing the graphs. Then if you go more, if you explore more, you can see annual scientific production. It will it will visualize the data and tell you how many papers are there for each year. You can go for uh, sources, authors. You can then you go for keywords. Let's let's have go towards clustering, uh, clustering by coupling. Let's see what does it show. It will show you a. Uh, it will show. It's not showing because the data it it would use is not there. But uh, let me show you more things like most relevant sources. Let me draw this graph. So it is showing that from this journal there were three papers. And from others, there were only one each. When you need to download this graph, you can press this button, export the graph. If you want to change something in the graph, you can change it here. Okay, so this way you can do the bibliometric analysis using graphs. Let's, let me find more things that you can see. Thematic map, clustering, um, thematic map. 
let's see. See, showing you the themes that the uh, the basic themes and versus niche themes. So it is saying that there are there are emerging themes and there are motor themes. There are many. So it is giving you some thematic analysis. So this is the library that can help you in doing the bibliometric analysis or some some of the SLR functions. So I think uh, you can explore it more using the videos that uh, I already shared in the library. So this was the library that we discussed about. This was a function that I discussed about, discussed about the graphs. Uh, now what we can do is that uh, uh, you, you can you can uh, practice few of the graphs and if you have any questions you can ask right now so when you want to merge the data files and and now in this uh, example i am going to show you how to pick variables from different data sets and make a graph and make sure that, that that graph has higher density so first of all what you will do you will create a second data file that is df1 which which is using a pipe function merge two commands together and when you run this you will have another data set which has one less variable since they are made from each other you can notice that they have equal number of observations it means you can combine the columns of two data sets if their columns are not same you cannot merge straightforward you have to tell r how to merge it because otherwise uh, there will be some missing rows and you have to tell r which rows should they keep missing the, we will explain that in coming record uh, coming channel coming uh, lectures so if the data file have equal rows we can use create a new data file and say c bind c bind means column bind and select one variable from the first data file df dollar so if you write a dollar it means it will go within the data file and see which variables are there i will select let's say c and then df1 and i will select dollar again and say i will say and I will create this control enter data file and you can see that there are only two variables and it does not have any names v1 and v2 so if you want to change their names you have to uh, use some other function that we will talk about in the coming classes now this is the command you you change the name of the file scatter and this is the command is to save the graph in TIFF format and you will say that its resolution should be 300 so 300 dot per inch dpi and then you make a graph and you say that my data file is df3 and x variable is v1 variable 1 and y variable is v2 and then its names are there if i run these commands it will it does not it has not found data file 3 because it's the df2 so you you can notice from the errors when you run this it will say that there is some error but let's see if the data is graph has been made so its name was let's see name is scattered.tiff so there is no scattered.tiff made here so what we can do we can set the working directory again so that r can pick it up and then let's see uh, why it is not making the graph let's just run the graph portion must be a data frame so see there's no arrow sign here it's not a data frame so it says that it should be a data frame so df2 should be equal to data dot frame df2 so if i see it it will become a data frame and then when i run this so if we have v1 not found why when i go here it's x1 and x2 so let's come back and change the names And then run it again so graph has been made so we can go in the folder now you can notice that scatter graph what is the size of the picture 331,000 kb so it's 31 mega uh, mb so it's very big data file and very high quality graph so, so you can say you can uh, change the labels that you want and you can make graph uh, the way you want using the codes that we learned how to make so this is the way you can make a 300 and 300 dot per inch graph using r 
so this was a uh, topic that we were needed to discuss in today's session so uh, uh, let's uh, so you can try it at home and let me know if you have any errors you can uh, tell in the comments or, or you can communicate with me with the uh, platforms that i have provided